Okay, welcome to another edition of the ProShare Confidential Discourse. I am Uto Abbas Hebaseko. We meet to discuss another recent report from the stables of ProShare titled The Money Market. Is Tokpe Babalala from our research unit. Nice having you, Tokpe, again to discuss the economy. Thank you for having me, Uto. Thank you. I'm looking at the money market and why the focus on the money market. Well, the money market in every economy is very important because it's a medium for finance seeking, just for like the private sector and the public sector. So it provides you that right, that right medium to seek for finance. And it's also very important in the sense that it's also a thermostat for economies which are maturing. Mm -hmm. Economies which are maturing economies tend to have a very strong money market, and that is cool. that's very good. It also provides an alternative in terms of sec um, security class between equities and your fixed instrument space. The money market also in many other economies also serves as a leading indicator. Let's not forget that the ten year, the direction of your ten year bond itself also serves as a direction. For, ten tends to play out as a leading indicator. As the ten year bond. The ten year bond, yes. So that that's very important. And if you remember, if you remember what's happening in the U.S. There's this debate about the flat yield curve and the direction of the 10-year, whether... A very it, big debate. A very big debate, whether the flat yield curve, if the emergence of a flat yield curve itself will provide a precondition for another recession. So the money market is important. It's important both for public, both for, and also at the same time for the private sector. Now, from your latest report, we've seen that um, there's been a comparison of the white net interest spread. We looked at the fact that it is prevalent in the money market and that looking at Nigeria and the BRICS and other markets in Sub-Saharan Africa, there were things that uh, you discovered. So what were the key findings from this? Well, yeah, the net interest spread in Nigeria, really compared to BRICS, these uh, frontier economies, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, it's wide. In fact, it's a gulf when you look at it. At uh, gulf. <laughs> it's a gulf, really. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a gulf. When you look at your, your maximum lending rate of about 31%, and you look at your deposit rate of about 6%, Look at your prime six percent for your mm -hmm. depositor. Then you look at your prime lender, which is about just seventeen percent. But all this also is also it's born out of several factors. Yeah. Structure in the sense that our economy is largely an oil dependent economy. And Even most when we talk about diversification. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the center, most credits actually still goes to the oil sector. And therefore when you have this recycles, when you have these cycles of booms and busts, there's always a pos there's always substantial possibility that in periods of busts, like, like what you saw in the oil sector, there's going to be high levels of NPLs, especially in the oil sector. It's not something that <laughs> banks <laughs> like to report. Likes, and therefore, they have to edge those risks. Yeah. So it leads, it foils and higher level of um, higher levels in terms of your MRR. Mm. Then secondly is that your economy is also highly an informal economy in the sense that it's cash dependent. Mm. And economies which are cash dependent, banks also are forced in terms of edging mm. of cash mismatch. That is also, and most banks also have a very high level of cost to income ratios, high level of cost to income ratios, and your CRR, you have a high CRR of about 22.5. You know, you compare that also Which to- Which has not changed for a long time, well, yes. monetary policy. Monetary policy, all this also fuels to it. And lastly is that you also have, you also have a very hawkish monetary policy. <laughs> you, know. you call it hawkish. Very yeah, hawkish like monetary term. policy. Yeah. So, you know, all this combination, Falls your net, falls this wild, this wild gulf in net, net interest spreads. Wow, which is a bigger a concern for, for us in Nigeria. Now let's look at the structural nature of the fixed income market. Um, it remains largely captive, like you've talked about the federal government, you know, the crowding out effect. Federal government controls so much of it. But there's, ne there's clear need to reduce this, uh, this crowding out by the federal government. In your report, what are the ways this can be addressed? Well, I think, first of all, it's the nature of the asset class in the sense that that also determines how captive it is. Mm. Well, federal government, are, federal government, in terms of its involvement in the money market, it's huge. And therefore, when you hold government um, glitch bonds, well, guilt edge securities, which I refer to as risk-free, <laughs> the fact that there is... Everybody likes risk-free things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fact that it's risk-free yeah. risk, risk itself yeah. it makes it captive. Okay. But the other part of it is that over the years, you've also seen events which have culminated into high, very high interest rates. Mm -hmm. And how we started with 2015, 2015 with these high crude pegs. And that also reduced the space in terms of seeking credit outside. Yeah. So we closed ourselves, locked mm -hmm. ourselves against them. 
external financing. Yeah. And at the same time, we're also doing, we're reflating the economy. So mm -hmm. most of the reflating we did was within short-term instruments, and that was done in the money market. So you have a situation whereby you have a glitch, which is captive itself, wow. risk-free, and at the same time, you also have high interest rates, especially mm -hmm. high, yield rate, high yield, especially on risk-free instruments yeah. at that particular point in time. Because if you look at it as a last day, you had in, the, um, the short-term instrument, especially the six months, at that time went for between 18 to 22 percent mm -hmm. in a scenario of high inflation. So mm -hmm. all these factors also made it very captive. But then the truth is that how will you reduce this sense yes. of high captivity? It also is likely dependent on government's reduction in terms of supply in the market. That's one. Then two is that the ability of government to also circumvent the domestic money market. Because when you circumvent the domestic money market, it also reduces the supply of government fixed Funds, instruments yeah. inside the market. So that also four. Then two is that you also have inflation. Mm -hmm. Because I will not want to be, I want to be recompensated for something which is higher than inflation. Because, of course. Because the truth is that inflation is, is, is a substantial discounting, is a discounting instrument, especially on fixed instruments. Right. So when you have high inflation, it also, you also must have government have to recompensate you for that. But what we're seeing is that you've seen it's easing. It's easing. Successively it's now. easing. So yeah. you have inflation at 14.33. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. High 18% level uh, yes. most of the time. So you have inflation easing. Mm -hmm. You also see federal government trying to circumvent the domestic money market. So these two, the question is you have to have an alternative in the sense that a strong, a strong, um, a strong incentive for the real economy. If you don't have that strong incentive for people to play into the real economy, it also affects the kind of supply in, in the domestic money markets by private. Partic particularly the private sector. By private sector, because I will not go on it. I will not also go into the money market if the real sector is not strong enough. Yeah. Because if the real sector is not strong enough, people might also not take on my instruments, because that is also a substantial factor. So you have to have a balance of strong real. The real sector have to be strong. And let's also be a bit frank. It's like, our commercial paper, in terms of the space in the money market, has been very lean. And even with the innovations from the FMDQ, where you see some private players going to uh, some activities there. Yeah, yeah, it's still been lean because mm -hmm. you still have a very captive. You've been having a very for very a very long time. Yeah. You have a captive um, glitch of mm -hmm. security. Yeah. So that it have have made it lean. But over as years go by, certainly mm -hmm. you should see a more robust, robust um, activity of commercial papers, mm -hmm. commercial paper and private in the money market itself. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to note that, you know, so this crowding out has led to more credit to government, like you've said, um, but issues like weak cash to deposit ratio, issues like slow growth in quasi money, and particularly for policymakers, they fell short in meeting their broad money supply target. I mean, what are the implications for the Nigerian money market for the long run? The cash to deposit ratio is you have is when you have this dynamic sterilization, there's always a possibility whereby your CIC also falls, mm. your currency in circulation. So mm. it add, that it somehow affects your cash to deposit ratio. Secondly, it's that your quasi money, and that's also very important because if I'm assured that I can get an 18.2 percent or 22 percent mm -hmm. on a on a glitched security, yes. then certainly why will I put my money in the bank? Everybody just raises for that risk-free uh, <laughs> solution. So, so you understand. So yeah. that also does not help quasi money. Mm. Totally, it's that you 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 have to take it. You cannot have when you have this consistent dynamic sterilization, whereby you are trying to ensure that you try to um, erode maturities. Mm. There is going to have a conflict of goals in the yeah. sense that you are fighting inflation, and in an attempt to fight inflation, you are also taming up money uh, money supply. Yeah. So. In that scenario, it also affects your monetary growth, your money mm. supply growth. And that's one of the reasons you, you found that, that that money supply itself, your broad money also fell short. Mm. And that's also very important. But I think more importantly, it's that you also look at your money, your, um, even though, they, even though money uh, policymakers actually got their M1 right, but you also look at in terms of their um, M1 money multiplication in terms of M1, also, it fell very mm. short in the sense that you have a very high base. And that high base is your high CRR, your cash, your cash Which reserve. Which has been at a level for over six, seven months six consecutively. High cash reserve ratio. So that itself also weighs down your ability to multiply money. So all these factors, you take them into consideration, are the ones who actually made monetary aggregates actually fall short in terms of their targets 
from monetary authorities. Wow, that is really um, interesting to note. And in, in, in closing, what, what would be the recommendation, the way forward to galvanizing this money market to be spread, not just every dominated, but more innovative, like we see in developing markets and developed markets? First of all, it starts with the structure of the economy. You have to have strong structure of the economy. And secondly, it's that it also have to, a more robust structure of the economy, sorry. Secondly, it's that you also have, you have to have a scenario whereby federal government it must reduce this is consistent consistent mm -hmm. crowding out because this crowding out itself is of could also be dominating it's like fiscal dominance so you have to reduce that and also you have to provide the kind of right incentives for the real sector because if you don't provide the right incentive it also affects the money market so those are the real issues trying to ensure that fiscal dominance is reduced provide the right incentives for the real sector so that people will so that private themselves to can also go into the money market with some substantial level of confidence that if I'll go to the money market, I'm also sure that there will be high subscription for my instruments. So for my um, for my instruments. So that's also very key moving forward. Mm -hmm. So you need that. And I think also you need substantial level of innovations in terms of your um, so much innovation. innovations in the money market in yeah. the sense that you must begin to provide the money market who also allows for this over-the-counter instruments, improve, mm. improve attraction for over the... SD, FMDQ activities, yeah. yeah. And at the same time, also improve subprime instruments. You know, mm. These are the kind of things also which help money markets because really your ability to edge risks, mm. ability to also ensure that the money market itself is more liquid yeah. because the, the liquidity of the money market itself is one of the things that also makes it more attractive, especially for countries like in the U.S., and the Japan, because when you have a more liquid liquidity, money market, money market also allows more allows substantial activity in it. But over the years, we've not been able to really solve that issue. Although yes, you've had the FMDQ try to do do a lot in that, do a yeah, lot of things in that. Innovation. But then it's for an economy which is a which is you look at an economy it's about more than a more than one hundred trillion. Mm -hmm. You know, we need bigger you need, size. You need than bigger that. size than that. So that's that's. Very, very important. Thank you so much, Topo, for your perspectives on the money market, uh, the recent report of Prochet Confidential. And I believe that um, this will bring to the fore the need for us to galvanize, bring innovation to our money market, which will spread out and really impact our economy in the long run. Thanks, Topo, for the time. Thank you. Thank you. So for more insight into this recent Prochet Confidential report, log on to www.prochetng.com and you'll get more insight and reports. Thank you for your time. Until next edition, I'm Minotova Sebaseko. Have a nice day.